Hi, I'm David, and welcome to Leisure Bit. And today we're going to be fitting a USB, two quick charge ports, and one USB C power delivery. And we'll also be fitting an extra 12 volt socket. So let's get cracking. Firstly, I wanted to fit a couple of fast charge ports uh, for charging up my phone and other devices such as my camera and also a USB power delivery port and that's for charging up the iPad predominantly. Um, in addition to that, sometimes I want to use my uh, laptop which takes a little bit more power, uh, albeit USB-C, than the adapter will provide there. Um, so I wanted a 12 volt socket to actually plug in my laptop charger that I bought that connects into, into the laptop and has a 12 volt socket on it. That allows me to use the laptop and charge things up off grid no problem. Now of course I fitted the spotlights with USB and they are brilliant. Um, what they don't have is USB-C with power delivery or quick charge and I'm using the 12 volt socket for the TV up there so I just wanted something where the wires are out the way down below. I did debate a number of places to fit the sockets I thought about fitting them in the back corner. In the end I went for after seeking a bit of uh, advice off the very helpful Facebook um, CV owners group I ended up fitting them uh, just down here just below which is kind of under where the TV and the telly bracket is. If you a quick look at that now. And I decided to kind of line the top one up roughly with the centre of the socket on the other side and then the other one just kind of in the middle of where the vent was and the socket was just so it lines up. I've slightly offset them and I could have got away with moving them a little bit more centred uh, because there's actually some of the framing for the bench that's in the way and also some brackets for that. If I was to drill it again I'd probably move them over just slightly once you've drilled the hole. Um, I just need to make sure everything's precise. I marked it up and just used a 29mm hole drill. The other bits you need for this is obviously you need the USB socket and there's a number of different types you can get. I'll pop a link to the one like this in the description uh, which is the one I've used. It has a little power button on it so you can turn it on and off. Um, actually if you press the right side to that side and it lights up when it's turned on and that's just a 12 volt socket. Again I'll pop a link in the description if that's the sort of thing you're after. I got these in a pack of three because they worked out better value than buying them individually and both of them have got little little rubber caps or plastic caps um, just to keep uh, dust and dirt out of them when not in use and just keep them tidy. One of the other key bits is those of you that's what the lithium setup will have spotted that I had a, a little DC breaker in the middle of 30 amp one uh, ready to connect these up to because I'd kind of pre-thought about doing this job albeit it's a good few weeks after I did the original job now that we're getting onto this and what I also wanted to do is I didn't want things being left on um, when the van power's not switched on. There's a potential that you could draw up to 10 amps through the 12 volt socket and again up to um, probably not 10 amps but probably 5 or 6 amps there and then you're going to start to overload the um, eldest panel um, if you start drawing that amount of power so what I wanted to do rather than just kind of attach it into the existing um, wiring is I just wanted to create another circuit for running things and you could obviously just put an auto relay in there um, the thing I don't like about those is they draw a bit of power all the time when they're switched on to operate the coil to pull the contacts. Um, so instead I went for a solid state relay, uh, which you can see there. I've kind of done some of the pre-wiring, I'll talk you through that in a minute. Um, and the solid state relay only uses between, I think it's between 13 and 20 milliamps. Um, to trigger it, so it's about the power it takes to light a, a red LED. Very, very little power there, 
compared to I think it was 1.7 watts I could be mistaken there but it, it, it was a fair bit of power to operate the mechanical relay so that's power saving and all that basically does is um, that connects up to the uh, let's go through the wiring now that connects up to the permanent power which I'm going to tap off that um, DC breaker that I put in this red wire feeds into this split conduit and we'll have a look at the other end in a moment and feeds onto the sockets and that's connected to the positive of the relay side and that's connected to the negative because the power actually comes from the negative through or, or down this way through and down into the negative whichever way you look at it doesn't really matter um, and at the bottom here um, and I've labelled them up uh, on each side we just label us so don't forget uh, on this connection here I've got this orange wire this small orange wire and that I'm going to connect into the a feed that comes on when the van electrics is switched on uh, which we'll cover off and that basically then activates the solid state relay and switches the power between these two and there's a negative ground um, earth whatever you want to call it uh, negative essentially um, that connects up then to my um, uh, negative distribution block and that also um, connects to here round and through this um, split conduit that I'm going to feed through there's the other end of it so we've got the the positive the red one um, that connects to the two sockets they actually come with an inline fuse in those and I'm going to keep that in I'm actually going to connect it up um, from from these both the 12 volt socket and that does just for a bit of extra protection there this then connects up to the um, van electric to signal when the power switched on and there's our positive and negative uh, black being the negative red being the positive Here's a simplified circuit diagram that shows how I've connected up, essentially coming off the bus bar through the breaker and then into the solid state relay and then from the solid state relay into the two sockets with the orange wire taking the feed to show when the camper van electrics is switched on. Let's get the hole drilled and then let's get on with the job. Once the hole's drilled, you can then connect the two sockets and then connect the wires up. I chose to solder mine and then heat shrink them to keep a nice tidy job, but you could obviously use a connector block if you so wished. I wanted to connect it up to the feed to the fourth fuse along in my setup, which is a power which it comes on when the camper van electrics is switched on. So I traced to work out which connection the fuse fed to and if you trace the other side there's a connector there which you can actually feed and connect to your orange wire to and that links to the fourth fuse along which I'm going to swap for a 2 amp. Right so we're now going to switch the power off and on and just demonstrate that. And then back on again. What I'll do is I'll switch the lights on in here so we can just see when we're going on and off. There you go. Now you can see how it's working and turn the lights off independently and it stays on. Turn them back on, and it goes off. So there we go. On, off, on, off. Automatically switches off so you don't forget to turn the switch off. So now that I've fitted uh, the charging sockets, I no longer need to use an extension lead. I no longer need to bring the power transformer, the uh, charger for the laptop. and no longer need to bring the iPad charger. Instead, I can use this smaller charger, which plugs into the 12 volt socket, replacing this huge one um, for the laptop and I can use just a lead um, and you can 
possibly just see there if we have a look you can see it's drawing in 23 24 watts um, for the iPad and I can plug the phone in and charge it up at the same time and I can also charge the camera up at the same time which is great um, say three sockets that you can use at the same time two quick charge sockets uh, with the USB a connection uh, for reference that's that type and then also there's a USB C power delivery which is this type the new one actually saves carrying all of this stuff here in the van and we replace it out with this and a couple of leads so much more convenient much more efficient and at the moment we're running on free solar because the sun's shining so what more could you ask for so we went through fitting an extra 12 volt socket and fitting a USB-C power delivery and two USB-A quick charge socket and then we connected that through a solid state relay so that we minimise power consumption and remove any mechanicals out of it. Uh, we connected that then to the DC breaker uh, just for a bit of extra protection and we kept the fuses also into the two sockets again double protection and then we connected a cable that connects back to sense when the van power is switched on or the camper van power I should say is switched on the leisure power and then that triggers the uh, solid state relay to switch the power onto the sockets there's also a separate switch on the USB outlet so you can turn that off independently it lights up when it's switched on so just a quick reminder as well don't forget only undertake this kind of work if you feel confident and competent and make sure you check how it impacts your warranty insurance and that sort of thing by doing that piece of work as applicable thank you for watching i hope you found this useful and i'll catch you on the next one see you next week bye